Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to take headlights like these, which have been uh, strictly polished over and over again, and take them and turn them into something like this, a proper headlight restoration. Crystal clear, much better, and will last a hell of a lot longer. Learn why polishing is a sham and uh, nobody should be doing it. Once again, I will be highlighting on this episode why polishing headlights is a sham. Okay, let's get down to business here. Starting with my P500, as always. Um, well, this light here, uh, I was doing another gentleman's car, and this gentleman pulled up, and um, he was a groundskeeper, and he began to ask me, why is my product look so good, and can I make his headlights look like this? Of course, you know, be, me being the salesman, I am. I said, of course, you know, we're the best, and I mean, it wasn't a lie. <laughs> So I finished up this vehicle and then um, on the vehicle prior to this vehicle and he pulled his up and began to tell the story of the headlights while I was examining it. He said that uh, for the last two years he has a guy he has to go to about three times a year to polish and buff out his headlights. Uh, so he's been to this guy about six times in two years, he says. And uh, he says what the guy does is, you know, it takes about 20 minutes, 15 minutes for both lights and, uh, you know, total. And uh, he watches them. He said he just buffs them out. He puts some, like, uh, uh, cream or something, which was a compound, and buffs uh, them out. But here's the thing about buffing uh, the headlights and why it's a sham. You see what I'm doing here? I am removing all of the oxidation not only am i removing all the oxidation i'm removing all of the buildup okay ladies and gentlemen waxing or polishing just polishing excuse me the headlights until it goes clear again is pretty much like polishing a turd you're not making it go away you're changing the chemical makeup to clear it's still there um, it's, it's still there. It hasn't been removed. The only surefire way to do a actual headlight restoration, a through and through real deal headlight restoration, a true headlight restoration that will last, uh, you need to remove it because once it goes bad and you're polishing it out to a uh, clarity or a more clear state, um, it pretty much comes back even faster and the thing with the polishing is they're using so much heavy amount of polishing and so much friction and polish it pretty much uh, leaves behind a lot of polish that's why you're going to see me here removing a lot of material it is not headlight surface most of this material that I'm just hitting the surface of on this light is polish I have to remove all the polish uh, there's absolutely no sealant on this light. It's just polish I have to remove. And any true headlight restoration must, absolutely must, especially in my opinion, if you're selling a product, must have a sealant to it, a UV sealant. Um, you know, got to be a UV sealant. Uh, if you just put a regular sealant on it, it's uh, it, it's going to go bad underneath the sealant very fast. Uh, anyways, um, when you're just polishing it, uh, the reason why it comes back so fast is because it's still there. Uh, now the sun is just bleaching what's already been bleached. And it's already, um, and it comes back even worse. Every time you polish it, it comes back worse. So you say if you polish it three times a year, the third time is going to come back faster and it's going to come back more on set and worse. And eventually you're just not going to be able to do it. With headlight restoration or true headlight restoration such as this one or any kind of true headlight restoration method, there are others, although um, all the ones that I have tried have paled in comparison to my uh, methods. Uh, but there's many out there. Any true headlight restoration method, 
um, it consists of removing this stuff. Um, and, and if you do not, it'll come back right away. I'm talking in some cases a uh, month or two, some cases even a couple weeks. Like uh, his, I'm sure, were coming back. Uh, you know, within a month, they started looking messed up again. And uh, he said he was tired of dealing with the dude. And, uh, you know, he'll do whatever he needs to do to make an appointment. I told him, pull it on up. I'll take care of it right now. But if, but a lot of people are taking advantage of people just because they're uneducated. And they just don't care to be educated enough about doing this process. And they're selling uh, headlight restoration or selling... Uh, you know, buffed out headlights as headlight restoration. And some of these companies even, uh, you see that right there, that's uh, three discs. You know, usually in a headlight this size, I would just use one disc. Even if it was sealed and I had to remove the ceiling and all the bad spots and oxidation, you know, one to two discs. I'm already on the third disc, the third 500, P500. But anyways, um, some guys are out there selling uh, this treatment, and they're selling it for the price of a headlight restoration. This is not headlight restoration, ladies and gentlemen. This is just some gimmicky trick that you should never be done. And some of these companies even sell stuff like that. I'm not going to say any names. Uh, and I've tried their products. So, you know, I've seen on the internet, oh, try this. Or you just rub this on here, a buff out with a drill, and that's it. Look how clear it is. It'll come back in three weeks. Guarantee it. You're going to be out there every month buffing your headlights out when you can just pay somebody to do it and not have to worry about it for at least a year or two. You know, the very minimum depends on how well you take care of your vehicle. Maybe, you know, you know two, three years. On my vehicle, uh, you know, I'm the man, but... Uh, my vehicle it hasn't had to have headlight restoration for over three years now, and, you know, but I know how to take care of them with aftercare kits and stuff like that. But anyways, that's for a different show. Um, but yeah, buffing headlights out is pretty much a scam. Um, it has no relevance in anything. It's, um, you know, anything that you could be like, oh, look, it looks better. And then it comes right back, you know right back in a month or two it's like man i would be i would be upset you know and i would be i feel some kind of way trying to run a business and have some person come back to me like hey what the hell my headlights are look worse this time and it's been two months but anyways uh moving on this is uh the first or this is um i just switched over to my p800 white sanding disc and see how smooth those strokes are. See the ripples. You want to see stuff like that. That lets you know you're not moving too fast. That lets you know that you're not, um, you know, missing spots. You always want to do a 50% overlap. Which means you do one 2 inch uh, line. Or anyways, this is a 3 inch uh, tip. So if you do one 3 inch, you want to, uh, you know, go back over that about a half an inch. About, a, uh, about an inch and a half overlapping with each stroke if that makes sense you see how I'm doing it there in this area here you can see it and you just want to you know this is a fairly easy light it's um, medium size uh, medium to large size but it has no lumps no humps no dips no nothing it just rounds to the side and that's it uh, so it's fairly uh, cookie cutter um, light uh, some lights are extremely hard to do because they have these different shapes and stuff like that. Uh, some of them are shaped like shark tooths, um, Nissan Maximas, and Ultimas of certain years. Uh, those are nightmares because they're literally shaped like a shark tooth and they have probably a dozen different angles that you have to hit and be careful with. But this is a cakewalk. And you see all that white dust, all this white dust I'm blowing off here. This is the actual, um, I, I've gotten down to the actual root of the problem. The original oxidation, the original degradation of the headlight that was never removed. So I finally drilled and got past all of those different layers of um, polish that has been built up on it and got to the oxidation underneath and removed that oxidation. And here goes my uh, trusty little gimbal here. Uh, it's my handheld sander, which I like to do here. This uh, helps with your clarity and uh, helps remove. It's not necessarily all lights. 
um, but I do it about 90% of my lights just to be safe. Um, you want to go side to side and it helps remove either side to side, vertical or up and down. It helps to remove any kind of swirling, uh, visual swirling left behind by the uh, drill and the sandpaper grit. Um, you know, sometimes if you press too hard or if you just get a weird area or just in general, you can leave some behind and you want to uh, get rid of those because when you're um, seating or when you're sealing uh, the headlight, they uh, show up more. They show up more um, and they're not as easy to mask or to fill in with the final step, which is the clear coat. And, uh, you know, once I say, once again, um, always moderate pressure, even though you're using your hand instead of the drill bit and you're, you're going a different way, you're not trying to, you know, brutalize this light. You got to finesse lights. I get a couple guys in my uh, DMs here. Uh, asking about swirling and how to delete it, and I always refer to them. I answer their question, but I always refer to them to, uh, you know, watch any of my videos and pay attention to that uh, specific detail that I always uh, say. You know, moderate pressure. You got to really use moderate pressure, especially with the drill, but even with your hand. You don't want to carve uh, areas out. You just, you know, kind of use a shearing and a real finesse motion. It's uh, it's artistic, not mechanical. It's not, um, you know, it's not a strength thing. At times, holding the drill still enough to not cause damage is a strength thing, but once you get into the groove, it's, it's, it's all finesse. You know, I have 20-inch arms, but, um, you know, I'm not muscling this thing. You know, if anything, I'm muscling um, with the um, drill or whatnot. But here we go. We got a uh, lady who came up asking me about headlight restoration. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fast forward to this uh, next step here. Hold on. Okay, so resaturating the headlight once again. Started with my P3000 Trizac pad. Uh, it's a magic pad that um, takes away all the fine swirls and does kind of a combination of sanding and polishing at the same time because it has a special grit method. Uh, they're shaped certain ways and they're certain size. It's a really high tech pad. Very expensive as well. And as you see here, um, some people might not know to the naked eye, but once I've seen this, um, kind of the tint, it has a smoked tint to it. Um, this is pretty much another thing that happens when you buff out headlights too much. Um, headlight restoration you can do like an infinite as long as you have somebody skilled enough that uh, works on your headlight restorations throughout the life of your vehicle uh, you can just keep doing it forever as long as you're not going too deep or applying too much heat you know as long as they're knowledgeable uh, but with buffing out headlights uh, like I said once again it uh, creates a lot of heat and um, it creates a lot of buildup okay so now you just have this wax or excuse me this polish that is uh, being, you know, pretty much heated up to a certain level uh, to polish because all polish uh, generally has to do with heat, especially when you're using a machine polisher. Uh, and what happens is it kind of bleaches the light after a while. This is why you got this smoked color here, and it's not quite as clear as I want at this point, but there's nothing you can do because the actual dynamic of the headlight has uh, changed the actual material of the headlight has changed a little bit of color it's not really supposed to be this color but you know we can get it all we can do is get it as clear as possible right now using my 12 volt 3 inch polisher and at the end of that that is a very old um finesset 3m finesset pad i use them until i can't use them no more 
Uh, they're very expensive, and it's just, you know, they there's no reason to change them too early uh, until they get really thin. This one's really thin on this last legs, and I believe I replaced it after this. But, uh, yeah, just polishing and um, pretty much uh, doing what uh, the polishing or the headlight buff routers do. Um, but it's generally just for this one step, and, and that's it. And we're polishing actual headlight. We're not polishing over oxidation or damage. Or like I said, the shit. You know, you can't polish a turd. Uh, we're actual polishing the headlight surface with no damage to the front of it. So um, this is the correct step or correct way to polish or time to polish. Uh, polish is just one step out of um, a, a full uh, true headlight restoration. And this is a really nice truck. This is a Toyota Tundra. Uh, really nice uh, mildly lifted truck. And the headlights just looked terrible. Always using a microfiber towel. Um, these are premium microfiber towels. They're really soft and I take care of them. I wash them correctly. I dry them correctly. Never over dry them. They get crunchy. And, you know, uh, when you're doing headlight work uh, with paint, you know, you should really have soft ones. But especially with headlight work, you need to have a nice soft microfiber towel. And as you see here, this is crystal clear. Um, it just has a bit of a fog that, uh, you know, don't like. But this is the Meguiar's headlight coating. As you see that, I don't care if it's uh, Timmy Job, Bob Smith's headlight restoration, whatever. It's, it needs to say headlight restoration. If you're using something on headlights, uh, primarily a coating, number one. If you're using a coating on a headlight and it does not say for headlights, you are in the wrong. You're putting something on somebody's headlight that you don't know what will happen. Uh, people put this 2K clear on the headlights, and it does all kind of side effects to the headlights. This, I can 100% back as a um, headlight restorer, as somebody who's done over a head thousand headlights, that this does no side effect, none whatsoever. It goes on easy, it comes off easy, and it adheres. It doesn't peel off, doesn't fall off, because it's dis specifically designed for headlights. Literally, scientists have put this together to adhere to headlights and to protect headlights and to make them uh, clear and look wonderful. So, I mean, when you when you deal with other stuff, it's designed for other stuff. That's why it doesn't say headlights or for headlight use. That's uh, my cardinal rule. You know, do not use something that does not say headlight restoration because you won't get these kind of results. You might think you do, but yeah come time to take it off it's going to be hard you're going to be explained to the customer why his lights all messed up but look at that gorgeous has a little bit of that smoke that's just because he's had his lights buffed out so much but still perfect crystal clear. please like and subscribe and feel free to ask questions and take a look at this uh light a little something i did the other day Amazing. This is the quality of work that you can get if you follow my steps. You use the products that I use. Perfect. Speaking of the products I use, check the link in the bio. Everything goes straight to Amazon where I purchase mine from.